Hello and welcome to the Cynical Optimist, the podcast where it's always Monday, so we can never be late. So take it, shove it, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I am Phil. And I'm Nick. This week, uh, we're catching up on a week and a half's worth of news because we took a little break there due to some scheduling issues. And we're going to pretend that we're recording and uploading on a Wednesday uh, because it's right on the end of E3. Exactly. So it's going to be really, really timely in its release. Yeah. Uh, and that will be the company line. We didn't we get the wrong time. From it. You got the wrong time. It's always Monday. <laughs> it's, it's Monday somewhere. Blame yourself. <laughs> anyway, before we get into the Electronic Entertainment Expo, uh, we've first got to talk about the stuff where it's on screen, but you can't control it uh, with a controller apart from to change the channel I guess or can and that's you? film and TV news um, or can you or can you um, bit of TV news this week not a lot but Looney Tunes is getting a remake or reboot I should say is this one of those ones where it's a really simplistic art style when they bring it back oh that'd be cool I don't know there's literally nothing about this in the world in, in, in the news um, is it just like a report I think some guy was just wandering out of the Warner Brothers lot and just Offhandedly mentioned something about it. Okay. Um, I was gonna say it's Warner Brothers, so are we sure it's not a dark and gritty reboot? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, can you imagine? Um, hmm. So what have they said about this? They're putting it in the hands of some of the best artists in the business, apparently. Good for them. It's not gonna be a radical reinvention. It's just gonna try and get back into the spirit of things. <laughs> To be honest, I think cartoon remakes, at least recently, have been alright. Yeah. Duck the, the new DuckTales is really good. I've heard a lot about that. Apparently that's really good, yeah. Um, Got a good old David Tennant in it. Oh, it has, isn't it? Yeah. Cool. No, I've been enjoying that. I'm I'm op- optimistic. <laughs> um, so yeah, good luck Warner Brothers on, on not screwing it up and not being tempted to make it gritty. Um... But after last week's story about the gritty remake of Mowgli, it seems Disney occasionally does go for the grittier take on things as well. Because, have you seen the trailer for Dumbo? No, I haven't. This was released literally today, I think. Um, Again, that's why... That explains it. (laughs) That's why we delayed the podcast. (laughs) Yeah, we Um, knew it was coming. mm -hmm. Our Disney insider told us. He was like, "Don't, don't put out a podcast on Monday. (laughs) <laughs> uh, wait till Wednesday and you get to see some dumb. Well, Nick will get to see the Dumbo trailer. It almost sounded threatening, you know. Don't put your podcast up on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> don't yeah, come, but we don't come to YouTube on Monday. <laughs> and a pic- picture of a knife. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> um, Tim Burton's doing it. Naturally. Um, you couldn't see that, obviously, because this is a podcast, but I just shrugged at the name. Tim Burton, because he hasn't really made a good film since... What was the last good Tim Burton movie? I don't know, I forget. (laughs) I might have to look up his filmography. (laughs) He didn't even do some of his best films, do you know that? He didn't do Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, I was going to say Nightmare Before Christmas was good. I, I don't even think he directed it, I think he was producing. Oh yeah, you're you're quite correct. Let's go with Batman, nineteen eighty nine. What Batman Returns? Yeah, I'd... Tim Burton has definitely made more shit films than good films, right? Is it? That's right, isn't it? That's right. And I, I was gonna I say, right? looking down the list, uh, it kind of seems a bit that way. Oh, yeah. there we go. He made a Lord of the Rings film in nineteen seventy eight. Did he really? But he was just an artist on it. He didn't actually do. Oh, okay. Um, no, I, I think he's probably made more shit ones than good ones. Um, but Dumbo could change that because starring Colin Farrell, Michael Keaton, Eva Green. <sighs> Fine. It 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 looks a bit it looks a bit dark and gritty. You can't see half of the trailer because like his his usual cinematography is kind of very dark and dingy. It looks like a Warner Brothers remake. That's a bit of a shame. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, it looks looks pretty. 
Yeah, I was going to say, the, the Disney live-action remakes in general have been a bit of a eyebrow raiser, haven't they? Uh, I really liked The Jungle Book. I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, I've heard The Jungle Book's really good. <laughs> um, I've heard that Beauty and the Beast didn't really add anything. No, it didn't. Um, so, yeah, I'm a bit just... Yeah, it is just a monumental shrug from me as well. Like, okay, yeah. sure. <laughs> I guess. Um, something that might not be a monumental shrug is Wonder Woman 2. Ooh. We've, we've had a couple of t- uh, pictures revealed. Again, I'm glad I waited till Wednesday. I'm glad we purposely waited till Wednesday. Because <laughs> um, we've had a couple of pictures from Wonder Woman 2 today, which is... It's got the working title, Wonder Woman... Mm, what's it called? <laughs> Hang on. I did have the name up. Oh, Wonder Woman 84. Okay, so I'm guessing it, it takes place in 1984. It looks like it's going to take place in 1984. Yeah, we've got a couple of images of uh, Diana standing in front of some cool retro TV screens. So that's... It's going to be like the Cold War, right? Yeah. Was that... Was that the the eight, eight around that time? Yeah. Do you know? Um, no, I think it was though. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, other than the first image of of Diana in front of those TV screens, we've also got another one. Guess who of? Is it the the the, the villain from the last one? No, Mustache. Is it Chris. Is yes. it Chris Pine. Yes, yeah, Chris Pine. Oh wow! Yeah, skip skip the foreplay and just reveal that he's alive for the next one. Even though th- I, this hadn't got out, had it? No. They've just released an image of him standing there in the nineteen eighties. In a, I've in a seen very... that picture. Have you? Yeah, it was just presented without any context. I oh, was like, okay. <laughs> okay it sure. just looks like Chris Pine in a shopping mall. <laughs> yeah, I was like, because uh, the person, was someone on Twitter saying that it made that made them want a remake of. Star Trek 4, which is a Star Trek film where they go back in time to the 1980s. Uh. So obviously Chris Pine's involved with that, and I was like... Oh, it could be I an thought, image from that. I, I was going to say, I couldn't tell... Maybe. But I don't think it's... But no, it's probably one woman too, then. Um, so it's weird that they just kind of let this out of the bag straight away, because also, there's no ageing on that. He's, he's, he's Chris Pine, yeah. as, as he appeared in the first Wonder Woman. But he's in an eighties yeah. get up. Um, <laughs> any thoughts? Uh, it sounds a bit silly to me, but you know, How the Warner Brothers out? superhero films could do a bit of silly sometimes. I think it's just gonna be like he's just someone that looks the same. No, and she's gonna like, she's gonna be like, oh, I keep on seeing him and you, and he's like, who's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they won't. And then, that, like, will they? then he'll he'll sacrifice himself at the end of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> in the future, whenever Wonder Woman sees anyone who looks like Chris Pine, she just legs it in the other direction <laughs> because they keep on dying. Um, I saw a pretty a great tweet on Twitter earlier that um, someone needs to start a support group for Steves who die in a plane during a war and end up in a different decade. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. That that could be fun. I like I like the setting of the eighties. Um, we had a really good. Uh, oh, we had the Atomic Blonde last year, which was really good. Um, it'd be cool if it it gets some of that decade nailed. Yeah, hmm. excited to see. Speaking of the eighties, oh yeah, um, I had some more news about Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, oh had, yeah, we've had the trailer for it a couple of weeks ago, but now. Apparently, Brian Singer is still going to be credited as the sole director on this film, despite the fact that he didn't turn up for most of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, this film had a really baffling production process. I've, I think I've briefly explained some of it before, haven't I, about the Sasha Baron Cohen thing? Yeah, you have. Well, um, also, uh, Remy, Remy Malik apparently didn't get on with Singer at all and complained to Fox about Singer's unprofessionalism, apparently. Um, and basically Brian Singer would just like spend days and days just not turning up to set and the cinematographer would have to do a lot of the directing well that's bad (laughs) but the Directors Guild of America have apparently suggested that you can only credit one director for a film unless it's proven that it was a a duo or something like that so Singer's still going to get the directing credit on this 
That's yeah. Like he, he doesn't every, seem like every, a nice bloke. Every other role I think in a movie can be multiple people, mm. apart from I guess the acting roles that aren't twins. Um, because like you, we writers obviously you've got the ampersand and you've got the word and. And the ampersand shows that they work together, and the word and shows that they work separately on the... Mm. So it's not hard. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's happening. Um, yeah. He doesn't seem like a good bloke. There's been all kinds of allegations made about him before. It's, it, I mean, I, I like a lot of his films, and I, I like the X-Men films, but this... this I don't... I'm not, I'm not sure about this film. The trailer looked kind of promising to a lot of people, but, like, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm very sceptical about this film. Well, we can only hope that the cinematographer was really good. <laughs> um, speaking of films, um, one of the sure. f- one of the films I'm looking forward to most this year, um, we've got a new one from Damien Giselle, who did Whiplash and La La Land. Uh, it's called oh, First, yeah. First Man. Have you seen right. the trailer for this? No. Uh, starring the ever handsome Ryan Gosling, um, it takes place about um, NASA's attempt to put a man on the moon. It looks really cool. Ryan Gosling plays Neil Armstrong. Okay. Um, and like La La Land was one of my favourites from last year. I didn't actually realise Giselle had a movie coming out this year, but this was a nice surprise when we got the trailer. Um, I was going to say, it's, uh, talking of like films <laughs> about that kind of story, have you ever seen uh, Hidden Figures? I didn't know actually that looked really good though that was that's a real good film I watched it um, like a few months ago okay uh, is yeah, it on definitely Netflix recommend. or Amazon or anything at the moment I think it's on Now TV Ugh. I watched it through some streaming service okay. I'm actually, <laughs> I think it was Now TV because I was at home I'm going to consider switching to Now TV because um, I want to stop buying DVDs I've, I've been lent The Last Jedi by the way did I tell you this no, I, I still haven't bought it. So someone's lent it to me, so I can watch it again and see how I see, feel. Here's the crazy thing: I bought it, but I sent it home for my brother to watch, and then my sister wasn't able to come visit me the next weekend. So I've bought it and still haven't got it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. Want I, it. It'll be this be this weekend. No, nah, hey. you, you don't want it. No, it's. Uh, I still, I still liked watching it. Um. We've had a, another trailer for Into the Spider Verse. Do you see this? Yes. How I think I saw it because you you like good tweeted does that about look? it. Yeah. How good does that look? Looks. I really love the art style. I love the art like, style. The cinematography looks stunning. Like all those upside mm. down shots and stuff just look like something else. This, I'm this this and uh, First Man. I'm, I'm pinning as two of my two of my big old hype films for this year. I reckon. Yeah, so that could be. Very so that's exciting. the thing. A few a few years ago, during like the Amazing Spider-Man years, I'd have said mm. that Spider-Man was probably one of my least favorite superheroes, just because Oof. he annoyed me quite a lot. Oh, the Amazing. But now Spider-Man he's era. right up there. Yeah, this year. Gonna, this year. I was going to say with yeah. Tom Holland and the recent uh, how the recent game looks and how the Into the Spider Verse looks. I actually, you know, become mm. a bit of a Spider fan. Apparently the um, newest Marvel TV sh- animated show isn't isn't great, but other than that, he's 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 swinging away with he's 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 swing he's on the upswing again. He's on the upswing. <laughs> um, what's the other piece of news? Oh, um, uh, you haven't seen it yet, but I want to talk briefly about Jurassic World because we're not going to do a full episode on it. It's not worth a full episode. It's not worth a full. <laughs> it's definitely it's it's, <laughs> it's um. I will say that it actually it reminds me okay so if Jurassic World the first one is similar to The Force Awakens in that it kind of gently repeats like a story from the first one hmm. this is definitely the last Jedi of, of this trilogy See, and arguably I'm, I'm hearing that as something interesting you're just saying it's something bad no I'm not actually I'm saying as I think it it arguably um, does does it more successfully than The Last Jedi but the thing is with uh, this though The Last Jedi there was also a change of director whereas it's Peter Trevorrow who's doing both of the uh, no, it's or actually am I ve- wrong it's very similar actually because Colin Trevorrow is doing 
Oh, Colin Trevorrow, sorry. Co- Colin Trevorrow did the first one, and he's doing mm-hmm. the last one. So this is actually very similar to how Star Wars... So he's Wars doing this one? This this one was directed by... Oh, I can't remember the name. He did um, A Monster Calls, and that one where Ewan McGregor gets flooded. I can't remember what it's called. Um, either way, yes, sorry. a different director. Yeah. Um... So it's actually very similar in terms of like they've they've given it to another another person to kind of put it out there a bit more, and it, it does feel a bit more out there. And they kind of they 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 break the rules slightly. They chuck away some of the um, existing plot points and some of the existing like rules that the Jurassic Park franchise has to follow. So. It's yeah, it's in- kind of weird how out of all the films, I guess, they give the middle one to the experimental uh, director. Like, I don't yeah. know if the first or last would be a better choice, but if you've got to do I, the... I think it's the- coincidental. I'm not sure. Yeah. Because Trevorrow was supposed to do... Interestingly enough, Trevorrow was supposed to do Star Wars 9. Oh, yes, of course he was, but he <laughs> dropped out, didn't he? Because he did a bad film, apparently. But now he's now he's come back to do... Jurassic Park 6 whichever one this is yeah or Jurassic World 3 I don't know it's um it's interesting those two those two franchises are like weirdly alike right now <laughs> yeah although I do still prefer The Force Awakens to the original Jurassic World oh yeah me too like but I also yeah. slightly preferred Fallen Kingdom to The Last Jedi uh, I haven't seen The Fallen Kingdom, uh, but you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not start on this again. <laughs> the Last uh, Jedi just, is it, not good. It's just it's, it's a metaphor for discourse on the internet. I haven't seen it, but you're wrong. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's actually surprisingly good fun. The first half... Oh, actually, weirdly, uh, the first half is better than the second half, unlike The Last Jedi. I don't know why I keep yeah. comparing it to The Last Jedi, but there are some very big comparisons. You, just, you need Last to get Jedi. over The Last Jedi. Yeah, but it's it's like it's a lot a of people comparison. on the internet. You need to get over The Last Jedi and move on with your life. Okay, it's in the trailer, but basically, uh, mild spoilers, I guess. But it's in the trailer, as is everything in this film. They they hmm. they chuck away Ila Nubwa. They 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 bin the island. So yeah, it's like like The Last Jedi binned a lot of Star Wars lore this this does the same okay not necessarily binned a lot of Star Wars lore but it kind of it's it's the same as Luke chucking the lightsaber over his shoulder it's it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's chucking the chucking the island under a volcano is what they do uh, sure whatever you say um, there aren't many things to spoil in this film but it's fine well, I'd say I'd... worth a watch if you like big dinosaurs. Yeah, well, you know, big. Sure, I don't <laughs> think I don't think anyone dislikes dinosaurs really. Hmm. I'm, I was going to try and keep this spoiler free, but I mean, I will. But also, there is watch the film, but but there's there's basically nothing to spoil. Okay, it's a very standard fare. Oh, except there is a there is a cool ending, ish. Ah, oh, spoiled now. Again, like the I'm last gonna be Jedi. sat in the movie, <laughs> wanting it to end. Like the Last Jedi, it kind of it opens up the door for for new things. Oh, my, my Avengers poster just fell down again. I don't know, if, don't know if you heard that. Yeah, down. It's fine though. I got the windows open. It's very hot. I'm very sniffly. I got hay fever. But. On the plus side, I'm (laughs) done talking for the episode because now you're going to talk about games for 30 minutes. At least. Yeah. (laughs) So, I'm going to start with a little bit of the news that came before E3, um, of which I didn't write down much of it because as soon as E3 started happening, it all got pushed several pages back on game sites and I just (laughs) wasn't going to go looking for it because E3 happened. It did, didn't it? Why would I spend time talking about things that aren't E3 in E3 (laughs) week? But first, here is... I do actually have a Link story this week. Um, something that is probably old news. Because <laughs> it's from like two weeks ago. Uh, but James Marsden will star in the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Is that the guy who played Cyclops in X-Men? Yes. 
Huh. Well, he played something in X Men. He hasn't been doing anything in a while, has he? Yeah, he did play Cyclops in X Men. Sorry, I'm just reading the story yeah. again. Um, well, he's doing Westworld at the moment. Oh, I haven't seen that, but it looks real good. Uh, so yeah, uh, I guess he plays one of Sonic's human friends, or maybe he'll be doing the the voice of Sonic. I reckon he could do a good Sonic voice. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's he's, my he's, link. He's got like the, he's got that kind of cocky kind of cocky voice. I reckon he could do the voice of Sonic. Yeah. Give him a go. But anyway, speaking of Sonic the Hedgehog, which is a video game, now onto the proper video game news uh, fully. The first story of this is kind of the sto- the pre the pre free big story uh, was. Did you hear that uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is suing Fortnite? Oh, I did actually hear us briefly about this. Yeah, the pettiest, yeah, <laughs> the pettiest lawsuit ever. Is this something to do with the production design? They're trying to say, I think it is. Co- they're trying to say copyright infringement, even when though they there look is nothing alike. When they look nothing alike, and you can't copyright a genre, <laughs> it's purely because uh, Fortnite Fortnite's is becoming doing the big. Well. Yeah, yeah, Fortnite's becoming the big, the big boy now, as revealed a few <laughs> days ago. Um, possibly loop back round to this one. I'm talking more about E3, but Fortnite is coming to the Switch. Hmm. So you'll be able to Fortnite on the go. Wait, which you will be able to do soon. Oh yes, in other gaming news, I got a Switch. <laughs> uh, Mario Odyssey is amazing, and I keep on dying in Zelda Breath of the Wild, but it's my fault, so I don't mind. I, <laughs> I just kind of walked off a cliff at one point. Wasn't paying attention, my bad. <laughs> but the world is absolutely massive. Is it? So that's going to take me the rest of my life to complete. Excellent. Um, but anyway, back to this. So this all comes from kind of uh, I think it is because they've put the lawsuit in in Korea because that's where Epic Games, who make Fortnite, are based. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because possibly they think that the Korean law is gonna be a bit more lenient to their completely, completely petty lawsuit. Sorry. I'm editorialising. <laughs> uh, so this worthless lawsuit then. Um, but it is purely because they were the kings of the Battle Royale genre. And to be fair mm. to them, they've bought it back in a big way. A lot of games are getting Battle Royale modes now. Mm. I think they might, I think it might have actually started again with like a Minecraft mini game or something like that. Yeah. But I know they've... But the thing is, PUBG say they take a lot of their inspiration from the actual book Battle Royale, you know, the book and film, the Japanese one, yeah. which also inspired the Hunger Games. Yeah. Uh, which, whilst that's really cool, kind of undermines the idea that this is some kind of unique idea that only they have had, <laughs> and that, that they can do a copyright lawsuit on it. Oh, it's ridiculous. And, and it's, it's a pub- shame as well, because that means, like, they're, they're, like, smaller sort of games that want to that wanna enter this genre might just, like, it might be a bit of a, 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 a stumbling block for them. Well, it depends how this lawsuit goes, because if it gets, like, completely destroyed, then it might... Well, the thing is, because it's in Korea, I'm not sure how setting legal precedent works over borders, but it very much set a precedent of, no, you can't actually copyright that, so therefore, yeah. you know, as long as it's a unique, uh, you, you know, unique implementation, then nobody owns the Battle Royale genre, which is true. Yeah. Because uh, the thing is, obviously, PUBG is very admirable, and that is made from like store bought assets. So it's very much a like something that a bunch of guys, I think, just put together. But at the same time, it's bought, it's made from a bunch of store bought assets. So therefore, there's nothing really unique about it. No, oh, yeah. So therefore, it's going to be op- more open to these ca- two people doing the same kind of thing in a better way. Mm. Which Fortnite is doing with a yeah. lot of more distinct weapons, designs, visuals. So in general, a bit yeah, a bit just a bit daft. In general, shut up, PUBG. Yeah, because uh, this kind of came around the same time that PUBG. Um, I think it was in one of their update posts. 
said that they admit they've fallen short recently on d- updates and patches and things and said they're going to try and do better mm. which is which is good and I think that's one of the main things about competition and in a genre like I think it makes both both studios will try harder yeah. for example I mean I'm not sure who who would agree with me but I think that arguably the people the people who like the shooty bang bang games would say that <laughs> if COD and Battlefield are both doing well then both are going to be more inclined to try harder yeah if exactly. one of them's just one of them's just putting out crap like I guess COD nowadays then the other one will feel a lot more assured that they've just kind of got it and then they won't try as hard either yeah um so yeah I, w- I started writing some kind of funny bit about this but I didn't get to the funny bit. I just was. I just basically wrote a sentence summing up the story and forgot about it. Apparently. <laughs> uh, wait, in, wait. In, no, re- read the sentence, and I'll try and I'll try and top it off. Well, so, so we've talked before on this show about Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, the battle royale game that's been all the range, and we've also mentioned Fortnite, the visually nicer game of the same genre. Well, these aren't the only <laughs> games. Zing. <laughs> See, there we I, go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um, and something that wasn't t- uh, brought up at E3, but I love the game, so I'm going to talk about it anyway, as it was yeah, a pre-story. I, I can do story. the jokes too, Phil. It's not just your domain. <laughs> I can do anyway. The wit- I can do the witty zingers. Yeah. <laughs> then then do them. Zing. Zing. Zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> anyway, uh, the first first DLC for Hat in Time, which is free, by the way, mm-hmm. uh, and includes couch co-op, uh, will be out this year. So if you want to get into some two-player Hat in Time action... That could be our next Let's Play. Uh, it's already earmarked for a Let's Play of someone else. Oh, you bitch. Sorry. I'm just I'm I'm just making my way around. I'm <laughs> let's playing with everyone. Ugh. Gross. I, you know what? I don't even want to after after you've done it with everyone else. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's gonna make. There's so many out of taste jokes I can make there that my brain actually <laughs> overloaded for a second. <laughs> uh, but I'll say it's fine. I'm not sitting um, on that couch after you've done it with other people. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say the the. There might not be anything on the sofa apart from, you know, memories, but it's the emotional betrayal. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, so I now... Uh, and now two games that I think... I'm not sure were... Like, had their trailers played at E3 because they were announced ahead of. Mm-hmm. Well, one of them was intended to be announced at E3, but was leaked, so they released the trailer early. And mm-hmm. that is Team Sonic <clears throat> Racing, another Sonic Racing game, where once again the question is raised: Why is Sonic driving a car? <laughs> I haven't seen this. Um, Look good, but yeah, it was, a, it was a very short teaser trailer of Sonic and Shadow racing cars around, which was it's kind of <laughs> endearingly silly. But to be honest, I've heard good things because they did the Sega Sonic and Sega All Stars racing, and then like. The a sequel to that. Mm-hmm. This is specifically Team Sonic Racing, so I assume they're getting rid of all the other Sega characters, and it will just be you know Sonic and friends. So I'm not sure how that will that will change the dynamics. So so what is this Mario Kart? Oh yeah, it's basically Mario Kart. Okay, Sonic Kart. Yeah. Mm. Um, and the other game you might have seen news about this is. They're sick. Apparently, that they're, they're not making another Lego Batman game. They're making a Lego DC Super Villains game. Ooh. So the trailer for that came out, and that looked pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you so it's all about playing as like all the different DC villains. Like you got the Reverse Flash in there, the Joker, Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn. Interesting. So that that could be quite a fun little experience. Well, Although I'm the, pretty sh- the amount of villains properties that DC is going to pump out over the next few years how many villains films have they got planned like uh, six yeah 
Well, to be honest, this is kind of an interesting, I guess, parallel to when they did the Marvel superheroes. But yeah, like and I, super- I guess the last couple of Lego Batman games as well were like um, about m- like general DC sw- superheroes, wasn't it? I was going to say, like, I remember at least in the first Lego Batman game, I haven't played the third one, I played the first two. Yeah. But I swear half that game you spent playing as the villains anyway. Oh, did you? Oh, I don't. I don't remember. So I'm not. So that was the one thing I immediately thought of when I saw this. Is surely you like at some point in the the first three Batman games, you unlock the villains as playable as you always do in Lego games. Oh yeah, yeah. So course, will this yeah. be the? I was gonna say so Lego you get Batman. Half the amount of people. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say at least Lego Batman One had playable story elements with the villains. I don't yeah. think Batman Two did because that was kind of more on the Batman Superman thing. Yeah. And then I think the third one, for some reason, was in outer space. <laughs> sure. For some reason. I haven't played it. <laughs> uh, so this... Like, to be honest, the Lego games are always a bit of fun. But I, at this point, part of me is like, where does where does the bottomless pit of Lego games like run a bit say, dry? Plus, haven't you, have you played the last few? Because I haven't played it since... I, don't know. I haven't bought a new Lego video game in years. No, neither. Um... Not well. The thing is, as well as when they're new, they still come out for like thirty quid. But a few years down mm. the line, you can get for like a fiver. So part of me is like, why would I buy one of the like brand new Lego games, which would just be the same as one of the older ones, when I could just buy an older one really cheap and play that? So it's a bit me cheap being a cheapskate. Mm. And to be honest, if I had someone who's more of a casual game around to play a lot, it is quite a good one for like somebody who's not as big on games. Mm. You can just sit there and just very casually work your way through. Yeah. So you never know. Hmm. But it is kind of like, especially with the DC ones now, they've done Batman 1, 2, 3, and now Super Villains. So I guess I don't know where it'd go from there. <laughs> it's not as if the. Because obviously Lego, Lego Marvel ended up doing an Avengers game because the Avengers films were already big. Oh, yeah, <laughs> they, they just used the story from the Avengers, didn't they? Yeah, so then, so they've s- somehow got like a separate Lego Marvel superheroes one, and a Lego Avengers one, which is more based off the actual films. Yeah, and unfortunately, you don't get I don't think, I, yeah, unfortunately, I don't think DC uh, could even do that because I'm not sure I want to play through my favorite moments from Batman v Superman. Do you not? <laughs> no. <laughs> you want to do the bit where Batman shoots about six people consecutively? <laughs> Press X to Martha. <laughs> you don't want to see the bit where you you don't you don't, you don't want to drive a Lego Batmobile around and 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 drive through a load of just like <laughs> random henchmen who probably have families and probably just doing it for the money. You don't want to do that. Mm. No, no, it doesn't appeal to me for some reason. Oh, okay. It's a mystery. <laughs> you don't want to play as as Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. But more animated, or maybe less. I don't know. <laughs> See, sorry, this is a side note. But one of the things that they did for one of the Lego Batman games, I f- I'm pretty sure it was Lego Batman Three, which I really, really did dig. Uh, was they did some Arrow DLC from like the TV show Arrow, Arrow, and they had Stephen Amell who plays the Green Arrow doing mm. like the most ridiculous narration in the trailer. <laughs> And, like, it was such a parody of itself that I just couldn't help but, like, appreciate it for its... <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he's, I thought yeah, that was he's, cool. He seems really into it, doesn't he? He did the uh, the Voices for Injustice as well, didn't he? Yeah, Stephen Amell seems like just... Je- like And, uh, to be fair, Grant Gustin, who plays The Flash in the TV yeah. show. Both of them seem like really, really nice guys. Unlike Ben Affleck, who I've just heard another story about today, that he's he, he may be... He's rumoured again to quit. DC Universe, basically. He does that like once a se- what Like I swear we've had a new story about that. Like every season we've been doing. I was going to say that. That's why I wasn't going to report it. But while we were talking about people who love doing what they do in the DC Universe, I thought I'd just throw in a story about someone who clearly doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, so before I go into E three, some E three news. E three proper. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's for, uh, got two in- entries into Weird Product of the Week, which is apparently other companies are hopping on the whole, you know, mini retro console bandwagon. Oh, yeah. 
for some reason, Atari and in television. And, and who? Now, in, so, the Atari and the television consoles were pre-NES, pre-Nintendo, like, early 80s. Hmm. Um, so, first for Atari, they're calling it the Atari VCS. It's now for pre-sale on Indiegogo. This story is a few weeks old, but I'm sure it'll still be there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's kind of... It's got pre-downloaded games on there, like the others. Like, you yeah. know, like this, the NES Mini and stuff like that. So this isn't... Is this official? I mean, it's... Yeah, it's, it's, it's oh, okay. being... A, like, that's one of the things that came up, is that... The story kind... Even, like, the way Destructoid has written the story... Kind of, it's kind of weird in the juxtaposition because they start it by describing them as legendary games giant Atari Inc. <laughs> and then it's they gone into Indiegogo to amass the funding. <laughs> legendary games giant have started a Crowd Kickstarter. Fund. Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> um, Interesting. So that's like the first one that's going to have like old Atari games on it. Do they now, get any money from the giant Atari logos in Blade Runners, you reckon? Probably. It's probably the majority of their income nowadays. <laughs> giant logos in sci-fis. Um, now, I'll, sh- I'll actually send you the link to this story, because I only tangentially really n- know what the Intellivision is from the fact that I read up a lot on gaming history. I find it very interesting. Hmm. But it was definitely way before my time. Uh, but you can see the picture in our Skype chat now, Nick, of what Which the device looks like. That is hideous. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, the final line... This is, again, Destructoid reporting this. The final line is just <laughs> amazing. Uh, they put, I predict a lot of Christmas morning tears from kids who are really hoping to get a Switch. <laughs> It looks like, it looks like something you would so, something you would dial, like, a pornographer on in the seventies. <laughs> it looks like one of the, it looks like if you've ever watched like a seventies film and like they're 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 in the hotel room and this is what they use to to watch porn on. <laughs> this is this is the ugliest device I have ever seen. It looks like the interior of like a a Datsun. <laughs> Ugh, it's brown and just gross. Ugh. Um, but yeah, so this is going to have classic in television games look preloaded onto its internal uh, hard disk. It will support HDMI, and there will, whilst there won't be any physical game releases, there will be plenty of edutainment games available. I don't like looking at it. <laughs> oh, I'm closing that tab. <laughs> so oh, yeah, it's, it's appearing on my Skype. Ooh, it's appearing on my Skype as well. It's just got the thumb. Ooh. It's fine, yeah. you can just, uh, yeah, disappear the chat. Yeah, I've hidden it behind my, my explorer window, yeah. Ugh, uh, so yeah, that, I guess that brings us on to It E3. looks dirty, it looks dirty, it, lo- <laughs> it looks like or, it's, ugh. Or, or doesn't take us on to E3 if Nick's not quite done venting. It like, it, I mean, to be fair, it's probably the most accurate, like, throwback console because it looks old and dirty, and it looks like someone just <laughs> found it at a car boot sale. Don't like it. Ugh. Are you quite done? Yeah. E3 then. <laughs> the biggest event for gaming of the year. Did you sit down and watch much of it live? I didn't know. I was going to say this is a rarity for me because I usually watch quite a bit of it live, but I was away at the weekend and then I didn't get out of work on Tuesday when Nintendo's show was until after the show had already ended. Oh. So what I. What I did when I was like powering up my computer, like bringing up YouTube, because I knew the direct would be in my subscriptions already, is like, because it was yeah. over. I purposely squinted my vision so I didn't see any of the like trailers, because they just throw up the trailers immediately with it. <laughs> um, but I'll get to Nintendo's show, so I'm, I watched that shortly after. I didn't watch EA's show, but I'm going to start with EA because I'm going to go through in chronological orders the order mm-hmm. of the shows. Apparently, EA's show was just a bit of a wet fart. Okay. Uh, We've got some Star Wars stuff though, right? There's some Star Wars, yeah. They confirm that the new Star Wars game is called, what, Jedi... Uh, I've got it here. 
The last Jedi, Jedi Jedi Fallen Order, huh. and that's been developed by Respawn. Oh, this is uh, set after Order sixty six, isn't it? Just between yeah, oh, it's surprise, surprise. It's... They're doing another spin off between three and four. To be fair, it's a damn good period. I know, but they can't it. get out of it. It's, yeah. it's annoying. I want to see more from outside of it. Um, I have a little theory actually about this. Can we talk briefly about this? Sure. Do you think they're doing it era by era, like with these spin-offs? Because you know the um, the next the next animated series and the ne- and the John Favreau project, um, both of those are going to be set after six between six and seven. Right. Do you reckon they're do you reckon they're doing the spin offs era by era? So we're doing a few in three to four and then a few in six to seven. Yeah, uh, and then and then after that wave is finished they'll 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 do some stuff set after this this trilogy. Yeah, they could be. Because every spin off has been about has been between three and four so far, hasn't it? Yeah. Rebel Rebels, Rogue One, Solo, this Potentially the Boba Fett, potentially the Obi Wan movie. Yeah, seems like a lot. Um. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's, also... uh, oh, there's another. There's. I oh, know it's not in technically in the E3 news, but some more so some more Battlefront content as well, right? I think that was. Um, it was in the E3 news. I was just scrolling down to that. We're getting. Oh, sorry. Getting. Uh, we're getting General Kenobi. And yes, General Grievous and Anakin Hello Skywalker. Yeah. Hello there. Hello there. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, and a solo season. We've got yes. A co- coaxium mind. So I think there's, at the very least, as much as uh, Battlefront Two has been just a, uh, been like watching a, I guess a car crash in slow motion. At least the paramedics have arrived now, and they're starting to do some work for the survivors. Look, the game itself is good. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the that's the great tragedy of the entire thing is that the game itself is good, and, and it would have that... sold massively more if they hadn't tried to mess with it. No, I think it would have sold massively more if they didn't cock up the first one. So basically, we're saying that EA does this. To the EA. first, the first one it... is like a it's like a demo version of this one. Yeah, that's the thing as well. Like yeah. they they were rushing out the first one to get it out in line with the Force Awakens. Yeah. So therefore, it was a bit unsatisfying. Yeah. And then for this one, they're like, "Well, we're going to have it out in plenty of time. What else can we do to break it?" And they're like, "Let's stick in a bunch of loot boxes and stunted progression, <laughs> and a bunch of really really bad stuff that's going to get us in all the newspapers around the world." But you know, in the last couple of months, some they've changed it to like a, a Pokemon style level up each character kind of thing. Yeah, so they've done, yeah. done some good fixing. And the solo season looks really good. They've added some really cool like new appearances for characters since. It's actually quite easy to get to get to build up credits without having to buy anything. I, I think That's it's a good, good game. Um, yeah. So that's that's uh, going to be quite quite good I think when that comes out you'll have to tell us I guess probably in the next season what whether well, the Battlefront, Battlefront 2 is shaped up to be a good game yeah I've seen a few like uh, re-review things on YouTube and like it has it has definitely sort of come back around I'm gonna I'm gonna have a go and play the um, Han Solo season tonight I think the cool you know, the coaxium coaxium mines I was gonna say the the other stuff the EA brought to the table was Battlefield Five, stylized as Battlefield, you know, the Roman numeral V. Ah, uh, very nice, yeah. Um Wait, where does that go? Where does the V go? At the oh, end. you mean just just after. Okay, they haven't tried to yeah. like squeeze it in the title because I like it no. when games try and do that. Okay. <laughs> so, um the main thing they've kind of pushed is uh no loot boxes and no premium pass. The developers were actually on stage to say, "Really?" So that that will be really interesting when EA executives completely ignore that and do it anyway. Yeah. yeah, they said that, but they had some like red laser scopes on their foreheads while they were saying it. And also, in in accuracy to the real uh, World War Two, Battlefield is getting a royale battle royale mode. 
You know those <laughs> those those parts of the war where everyone just killed each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the the land was just getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> uh apart from that there was Unravel 2. Now I haven't played the first Unravel, but the game is the most adorable thing in the world. It's about a bit li- little yarn man trying to get to his destination. He looks like he's actually made of yarn. Oh, I think I've seen it. He looks a bit like uh, Sock Boy, doesn't he? A little bit. And now Unravel 2 is two yarn guys. And so it's got co op. Or if you're playing single player, you'll just like control them both. Fair enough. So they're, tr- they're trying to help each other. Hmm. It was all very adorable. <laughs> so, and then there was Sea of Solitude, which I didn't really see much about, but that's an indie game. Um, which looked pretty cool uh, Command and Conquer if you ever had that series when you were growing up I have is never getting a it. getting a mobile game so that will be terrible <laughs> because EA just can't do good mobile games uh, oh Bioware's new game Anthem looks alright actually it's a kind of lost planet go around in big mechs and discover shit hmm that sounds a bit like... Is it Helldivers? I'm not sure. That? Yeah. No. That was a pretty good one. But Bioware have made some pretty good games. They made the Mass Effect games, and before that they made the Star Wars uh, Old Republic games. Okay, yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, and obviously the biggest reveal that no one saw coming... Uh, FIFA 19 is coming out this year, Nick. Can you believe wow. it? I can't believe it, no. Yep. I've literally got nothing to say about that. Um, I don't I don't even know why they bring the FIFA games to EA, uh, E3, apart from the pad time. Like, they're not an announcement. You know they're coming. <laughs> and is there anything new they've announced? Maybe a Battle Royale mode? Or, or like, 20 goals all around the side. <laughs> and, like... Yeah, have to put a goal in every, a ball in every goal. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe a partnership with the, uh, with Disney. Maybe they've added Thanos as a playable character. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> so yeah, I don't think there's much else to say. Like uh, f- football. Yeah, I was gonna say EA's EA show was nothing special. Hmm. Like. I only I'm only doing I only did the catch up and I only did like a lot of reading around it and I was like well I at least I know I didn't miss anything. <laughs> uh, next up chronologically, I hope because I'm just kind of I, I do apologise if I miss any of the small ones like I probably won't cover the PC gaming show, although I will after this next one I will go into it was two indie. Sh- Studios that did do uh, conferences and they were just really good. Yeah. So I'll talk about those. But get. Ah, uh, no, screw it. Talk about them now. Screw chronological order. Anyway, the first one was a company, a uh, developer called Tiny Build. And they they just did a musical number for theirs. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're an indie studio. They only announced one game. But, but a musical. The, but it was. Like, the game looked alright, but it was just their musical number was just pure satire about the gaming industry. <laughs> and it was like, it's going to have loot boxes and it's going to be 4K pixel art. And it was a, <laughs> it was amazing. And the <laughs> other one, the other small studio that did one, was Limited Run Games. So they're a company that more specialises in doing limited physical runs of purely digital games. Okay. But they did theirs. Like, they, it was clearly all pre-produced because they did it all in front of, like, green screens. They had an audience that they'd made up of one of their members of staff, like, clapping wildly and a bunch <laughs> of cardboard cutouts of people. <laughs> and, like, they had... A, it was all completely built in, like, 3D imaging software, like the stage and everything. Yeah. And each of them came out looking and they kind of bigged up how flat everyone looked. <laughs> and it just was the most funny th- like it was just so entertaining and like I do love it because uh, last year and I think this year as well Devolver Digital did it similar they just took such a comedic take yeah and it just 
it's good when the little guys like come along and they just do something like it's made their shows much more memorable like I, I was remember... going to say yeah it draws attention as well doesn't it I was going to say I wouldn't have bothered remembering the names Tiny Build or Limited Run Games probably as much no. if they didn't do like just some really weird ass shows <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so anyway getting back to the, the old the old boring guys actually get no the next the, get back to the corporations Screw I was going to say guys. The next one on the list, though, actually wasn't too bad. This was the only one I actually caught live. Actually, that's a lie. I caught two of the others. This is the first one I caught live when I got back home on Sunday. This was Microsoft. Right. So, Microsoft typically have bad press conferences. There was one year where they were talking about a new Forza game and for some reason had felt the need to lower a car down on like this little <laughs> stage thing and it's like why what was the point <laughs> but they did a don't very they always get they always get like a very weird scary bloke as well don't they what phil spencer i think his name is is it i was gonna say i don't know about previous years but this year it was just their their regular guy and he just oh. he just basically turned up every now and again and just a little bit of chatter but the good thing about this is that and a good thing about a lot of these shows was that it's purely about the games like this apart from a little bit of talking here and there it was just trailer after trailer Hmm. which I did appreciate they showed off they were very much pushing that they showed off like 50 games but the truth of it was only 15 of them were reveals and I think only about 22 of them were exclusives or something like that. <laughs> so, oh, right. um, yeah. but of the stuff they did show off, they opened with a new Halo game, obviously, mm-hmm. called Halo Infinite. So Halo fans uh, enjoyed that as like the, the dive, it, like the, the opener. Mm-hmm. They showed a bit of the Ori, Ori and the Will of the Wisp, which was the sequel to Ori and the Blind Forest. Mm-hmm. And that still looks beautiful. Um, then they showed a ninja game Ooh. from the makers of Dark Souls, which was all right. <laughs> uh, they sh- got the first proper look because this had been a teaser trailer for this had been shown before E three, and it was actually in my news when we were still going to do a show last week. Yeah, but Fallout seventy six. If you've heard much about this, oh, I have. Yeah. So this is obviously skipping Fallout, I guess five through seventy five. Mm-hmm. Uh, because the last one was Fallout 4 but this is the uh, this is a Fallout game set in West Virginia so it's got Washington DC and stuff in it and it's got that song that was in every single movie last year what you mean um, Country Road yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> but it kind of fits here because obviously it is West Virginia yeah. yeah it's probably a 70s song as well I don't actually know but um Bear in mind, they just 70s... randomly put it in Kingsman for no reason whatsoever. Yeah, that's true. Ugh. Although, you know, 76 isn't referring to a year, right? No. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> this Fallout 76 is a is referring to the Vault 76, which gets referenced in other Fallout games, and it's the first Vault. And ah. it's, I think it's the first one that opens after the nuclear war. I've never played a Fallout game, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. I've played bits of Fallout 4, so I know a bit of the lore, and to be honest, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, I've um, heard very Apparently good it's... They were bragging it's like three or four times the size of Fallout 4. Oh, no, mm. it just... I have got it written down. It's four times the size of Fallout 4, so... Big. Big. Big um, game. I'm sure... And... It's going to be an online one as well, so you can play with people. Oh, I've heard, actually, it's going to be... There are... More survival... Been... Elements. Did I hear there's not going to be any NPCs? I was going to say, I wouldn't wouldn't surprise me. Did I hear that? Because that's, that's pretty, that's pretty all, big. Yeah, I was going to say, it's all about playing together. Yeah. So that's going to go terribly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it still looked pretty cool from its uh, trailer. Yeah. Then there was... Uh, I'm not going to go for every game, but... The Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit... Fantastic. Um, which is a part of the Life is Strange series of games, so that's all about like narrative driven stories and stuff like that. 
looked all right. Um, and then you obviously you, you've watched Brooklyn Nine Nine, right? No, I've watched like uh, a couple. Do you you know who Terry Crews is? Oh yeah 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 because obviously well he was in Deadpool too. Yeah. Um, because he's he was the voice of one of the characters in the Crackdown Free trailer, and that was. I always enjoy hearing Terry Crews because he sounds so enthusiastic, <laughs> and the trailer did look pretty cool. <laughs> oh, cool! Um, that's just kind of like an action game. Are you a Kingdom Hearts person? No. Uh, okay. Well, skip. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've never played it, but I might oh, and- be. Here's one that you might find interesting because you might not be a Kingdom Hearts person, but you're a car person. I am a car person. Uh, have you seen the stuff around Forza Horizon Four? No. Now, this is another one where everyone kind of Wait, plays hang on. on the. Forza's just Xbox, right? Yeah. So no, I'm not interested. Well, I'm going to talk about it anyway. Ugh. Oh. Uh, but it's going to be a shared one of and like Fallout shared world online, but it's. Come into it's going to be based in Britain. Ooh. So it's going to be about driving around like British country roads and stuff like that. Country so- roads. <laughs> West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. West <laughs> Bromwich. <laughs> it's all tying in. <laughs> um. So that. Okay. Actually, yeah, that sounds interesting. Yeah. I mean, it looked like, like you wouldn't. Do my. I couldn't really tell what the point of the game was. I guess you go around finding races and doing them, but the pl- gameplay of everyone playing together just looked like a bunch of people like messing around, which I guess is alright. But for like a full console game, hmm. uh, I particular that wouldn't really be my kind of thing. But I no. don't know. I guess it's a good way of stopping like people driving like a tit in Britain that they can just go on their console and doing it instead. True. Uh, yeah. To be honest, the fact that it's in Britain was probably the most interesting part of its entire reveal. <laughs> because I was like, do I know where that is? And I was like, it's a simulated video game universe. It might not even be accurate. <laughs> <laughs> um, I suppose if you didn't want to play at such high speed, you could always pick up just Euro Truck Simulator and do that instead. <laughs> uh, then, yeah, it's yeah, there's more stuff on the new uh, Tomb Raider game. So that, oh yeah, that, that looks pretty interesting, pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I like the the way the design of Lara Croft's gone over the last few years. Like Less kind pointy. of a, Less yeah. pointy. Yeah, let's go with that. Less pointy, <laughs> I guess. But you know, looks doesn't look so much like was it Angelina Jolie as I think all the early ones kind of did. Yeah, it has her own kind of look to her. Yeah. Um, a bit like the the new film version. I really hope that yeah. gets a sequel. That I enjoyed that film. I um, it won't, but it might do. Depends do reckon... how well it does. It depends how well it does when it hits streaming services. Because I think that might be quite a big thing nowadays. Yeah. Like I reckon, film companies are very interested in how much a film's being streamed. Well, they teased an Assassin's Creed sequel at the end of the first one. I don't think that's <laughs> ever going to happen. Which see, I also I, enjoyed. See, I think I've seen Assassin's Creed, but I don't remember any of it. Really? I, I remember it. I remember a bit where a machine is shaking around uh, <laughs> Michael Fassbender. <laughs> so get off! Get off! <laughs> That's about it. Yeah, that happens. Um, do you like skateboarding games? No. Okay. See, I used to play a bit of Tony Hawk's when I was growing up, so sessions look kind of interesting, but at the same time, I haven't played a skateboarding game in years, so <laughs> not not sure it'd be much of a thing for me. Um, didn't, oh, that, didn't that genre just get swallowed up by, like, other genres? Like, surely surely Grand Theft Auto covers the entirety of skateboarding games? No, because Grand Theft Auto, to my knowledge, does not give you points for pulling an ollie. <laughs> Yeah, alright. And also, just... I'm not sure if you can use skateboards in it. It's a very niche genre. Yeah, but it, I think a good one can be fun to anyone, but a bad yeah. one is just bad. Like, shit, yeah. pretty bad. Um, Now on to two game announcements that I was super hyped for. First off, Cuphead, great game from last year, is getting, oh, DL- is the weird getting one, DLC. 
Yeah, the one with the guys with the mugs for the heads. Oh. We've got Cuphead and Mughead. And Pick now our fe- female main character as well. I think called Lady Chalice. Very nice. So you've got... Uh, and it's... <laughs> the DLC is called Cuphead in the Delicious Last Course. <laughs> Which I thought was quite fun. And it all, obviously, it's all styled like old cartoons. So I, I did yeah. like that. And the trailer does look quite fun for it. Mm. Um... And and the game, then the announcement that I was like, that looks really dumb, but it looks quite fun, <laughs> uh, is a game announced called Jump Force. Now, do you know what Show and Jump is? No. See, it's a Japanese publisher of like different mangas. So Naruto, One Piece, Dragon Ball, uh, Death Note, all fall under Show and Jump. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I think tangentially. Uh, One Punch Man does as well and a few yeah. others but this is a 3D crossover fighting game but which just basically was announced with Naruto, Goku and Luffy fighting one of the villains from Dragon Ball in like a apocalyptic city and I was like that looks just really really dumb <laughs> but alright also kind of cool <laughs> I was like I'm game sure why not um, saying that I'll probably Prioritize pick it, finally picking up Dragon Ball Fighters before I get that because that's coming to s- Switch, but get to that soon. Um, oh, and a new bat a uh, Battle Toads reboot is coming. Um, Battle Toads is a game that I'm was putting a blank to... face right now, by the way. So we well, you'll you'll see why I am I am mentioning it once I give this clarification. So Battle Toads back in the day was a game on the NES. Uh, developed by Rare, so I know obviously them. Rare developed went on to develop Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, yeah, Perfect Dark, Donkey Kong sixty four, and a range of other good games. And the thing about Battletoads was it was always like reveled for being just super hardcore and super difficult, right? Um, and it was just a really good game. And obviously, it's not being made by Rare; it's been made by a different studio. But it's nice to see some of their old properties starting to get a bit more. Yeah. Leg room, even if it's a different studio taking them forward. Are there any so, of the developers from Rare like working on this? Because I know they did with um, what was it, um, ukulele. Uh, no, not to my knowledge. It's I don't know who's a part of this new studio. And to be honest, none of the game was shown off. It was just like announced that it was happening. Okay. So I'll have to wait and see like a proper trailer before I give proper thoughts. But I'm I'm down. I'm up for it. Yeah. Um. Sounds fun. Oh, and this this ah oh, the dumbest uh, the dumbest announcement. Well, one they first they did Gears of War five, um, which is just very standard shooty bang bang in space. Mm-hmm. But then for some reason they're making a Gears of War Funko Pop game. You know those Funko Shh. Pops that people buy. I've got a couple myself. Yeah. Yeah, they're making a game like on of, of those. It felt very much like a Lego game rip off. Yeah, it's going to be say, like a it's going to be like a mobile game. To be fair, that sounds kind of fun. <laughs> it was announced to a very confused look from the audience though, because of how serious and manly and hardcore the Gears Wars, the Gears of War games like to think they are. Yeah, I kind of so like was... the sound of this. That sounds that sounds kind of fun. I was yeah, going to say little... if it... that little Comes... alien. Um, that little alien mascot I had I think that's a Funko that is a Funko yeah yeah so the thing is I've got nothing against Funko Pops it was just strange <laughs> yeah I just I like the design of them I feel I feel like if they do that in like a in a different style because to be honest I think there are too many games that are like overly like masculinized and like just like over the top oh yeah and grrr, and... There, there, is, there are some games that really need to take a chill yeah I want to see some more fun stuff and I think there's much more you can do of a good art star when like a silly sense of humour than just like yeah. grit gritty rrr. And I really like the designs of Funko. I think they're a tad overpriced. Oh they're yeah. Cute. I've got a little Krennic here from Rogue One and I've got a little Porg here as well. Um and the last and I've game I've I got a Deadpool in my car as well. I have the l- last game I'll talk about from Microsoft, their show, was mm-hmm. I think the game that ended their show. And to be honest, this game looks super cool. I've talked about it already this season. 
Yeah. It's uh, the first look at Cyberpunk 2077. So it's from the guys that made The Witcher games, which The Witcher 3 is great. But this yeah. is like a, a futuristic cyberpunk world. And it's like got a big old city you can explore and... Oh, I saw a thumbnail of it. Does it look a bit like um, Watch Dogs to you? It's like futuristic Watch Dogs. Okay. But i am got more hope that it'll be good. <laughs> because it's CD Projekt Red, not Ubisoft. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Was Watch Dogs that... no good in the end? I never played it. But... Um, I never like got around to playing it properly. This is again saying that you don't like something even before trying it. But I heard it was just a bit... The first one was just a bit mad, and the second one was a lot better. Oh, okay. Like, if it's one of those things that if it goes on to the, you know, you play for free kind of thing, then I'll get it. But yeah. to be honest, I never log into my Uplay account, so I'd probably never see it if it was. I might already have it for free, to be honest. I'm just thinking <laughs> about it. I think this might have already happened. Oh, I'm going to have to check this after the show now. So... Phil's made a very rushed judgement about a game he may own, but has never played. <laughs> I've also got a bunch of the Assassin's Creed games on there. Have you? Yeah. Nice. I can't, I can't remember how they came into my possession, though. <laughs> oh, it's, it's great when you have a gaming PC, because you forget you own games. <laughs> because you've just got so many, because it was a sale, and you had to buy them all. <laughs> Um, oh, I think I remember, yeah, they gave away all the Assassin's Creed for like five quid for like all of them, didn't they? Yeah, that might have been it. Yeah. You know, I think it's because I wanted to play the pirate one. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, and then I just never got around to it. <laughs> ah. God. Gaming is fun. Gaming, eh? Um, so now, a show that, uh, Actually, I think it was just, I sadly uh, around the Monday, Sunday Monday mark is when Bethesda and Sony have their shows. But because obviously it's US times, they're like the middle of the night over here, so there oh, okay. was no way in hell I was watching Bethesda or Sony live. And those are the next two. I'll try and get through these ones a bit quicker. But Bethesda showed off a lot of stuff I like the look of. One, they showed off a bit more of Fallout seventy six. So I don't need to, really need to go into that again because we've already discussed it. Uh-huh. What, what West I Virginia. D- Mount County Road. I don't know the words. Take me home, country road. What they did show off, um, concentrating on the stuff that I'm interested in, because that's uh-huh. what a good, good host does, is a sequel to uh, 2016's Doom. Now, I right. thought Doom was amazing. It was so fun. Um, so Doom Eternal, which is what the sequel's called, showed off like a teaser trailer of all these demons and hell, and like the Doom guy basically like walking up to like face them. It was just, mm-hmm. and it's just the music was. Uh, I do. The thing is, it's not really my kind of game, but it's just presented so so well. <laughs> um. So yeah, that was pretty. Never dope. played any, but. Have heard good things. Uh, from as somebody who enjoys inclusivity in media, the mm-hmm. new uh, the new Wolfenstein game is a kind of uh, it's an action game set in this you know this alternate history where the Nazis won the war, and it's you can play either in solo or co-op because the two main characters are the two daughters of the main character from the main series of games. So, you got two kick-ass ladies. Hey. Uh, I thought you were going to talk about The Last of Us just then, but I guess that's coming. Yeah, that'll be in Sony's show, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So that, to be honest, the t- trailer for that looked pretty cool. The Wolfenstein remake, the the new Wolfenstein games, to be honest, have generally looked pretty good. Yeah. It's just another one where it's like, oh, I'll maybe get to it one day. <laughs> uh, and then... To be honest, I thought Bethesda have announced quite a lot of stuff because they also announced a new sci-fi game called Starfield, which basically just got a tra- teaser trailer of like this star-shaped satellite uh, orbiting a planet, and I think that like I like their games enough that I that's no star, that's a star field, that's a star station. 
Um, and they also ended with the announcement of a new Elder Scrolls game. So, like, the follow-on from Skyrim, Elder Scrolls Oh, 6. yeah, 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 I heard about this. And so, I'm very impressed, but it's like, whilst Bethesda are making steps into being a publisher, I... St- Still pretty sure that Elder Scrolls, Starfield, and Fallout are all handled internally, and those are going to be three massive games to be working on in tandem. Considering up till now they've made them almost uh, alternately, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So they made. Oh yeah, Fallout... it's been ages since the last Elder Scrolls. Yes, yeah, so they made Fallout Three, then but Skyrim, these have all been, then these Fallout Four. Announcements, though, right? Yeah, so they're all... Li- but what I mean they, is they're they could, all they, in they development. Could be, they could be years away. Hmm. Especially Elder Scrolls. Like, that game... The Skyrim was enormous, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Although, Bethesda showing themselves to not be so, you know, to be very self-aware. Um, they showed off... And obviously, you know, the whole joke is that Skyrim comes to everything. Yeah. Uh, they showed off a trailer for, <laughs> that they called Skyrim <laughs> Very Special Edition, which was with uh, Keegan Michael K, you know, the comedian. And it was Skyrim on your Amazon Alexa. <laughs> and it's basically him just shouting at an Amazon Alexa. <laughs> and it's basically making a joke out of. But it's a real thing, it turns out. You can get it for your Alexa. Really? Skyrim Very Special Edition. That's um, hilarious. But it also made a joke about how Skyrim was soon going to be coming to Etch-A-Sketch and <laughs> to, like, his fridge. And he, was, he just stood there, like, pushing buttons on his fridge with, like, a small Skyrim screen on it. And he get, <laughs> casts, like, an ice spell and, like, ice pours out the ice dispenser. <laughs> and it's just a very funny video. And it's very, like... Like it was just quite light hearted to see and it was probably yeah. definitely the best game that Bethesda showed and they showed a lot of good games hmm. so yeah Bethesda show was very very positive which is why they need to put it at a better time of day really yeah well um, it's okay in the US I guess but... yeah but you know we're not in the US no so yeah so life is strange because I'll, I'll just move swiftly on to Sony um, because obviously that trailer was showed the the main the main the main lady character. I'm really terrible with the names in this. Um, yeah, Ellie. Oh, in The Last of Us. Yeah, Ellie obviously yeah. Uh, kissed her girlfriend and headed off into the woods and then killed someone. Is what I hear. I haven't actually killed seen a, the trailer. Killed a, zomb- a zombo. Yeah, but I heard The Last of Us was one of the was a damn good game. So, I am. Um... You interested I, in getting I, it? F- no, you got a PS4. Yeah, definitely. I um, the 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 first Last of Us. I never actually played it, but I once one of my housemates had it in uni, and I I was so hooked on the story. I literally watched him play the entire game because <laughs> like a let's a really, play but live. Exactly. It was um, yeah, really really cool story and really great characters. I yeah, I'm very interested in getting the sequel, and I you know I love a good bit of 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 rep. Hmm. Shout out to Ellie. Um, I was going to say, there's not a massive amount in the Sony one to talk about from my point of view, but Spider-Man got a new trailer, Spider-Man. if you saw it. Yeah, this is another game. I've... In fact, the two main games I'm interested in this year are both from Sony, interestingly. Is that what, uh, The Last of Us 2 and Spider-Man? Spider-Man, yeah. Um, despite the fact that Sony films are probably the least interested I am in this year. <laughs> I was going to say, Sony is still making Into the Spider-Verse, right? Uh, oh, yeah, they are as well, actually, yeah. All right, okay. But so the live-action stuff is not what I'm interested in. So the only thing that Sony are creating non-Spider-Man that you're interested in is The Last of Us 2? Yes. <laughs> and that they're just publishing. It's naughty, though, they're developing. Sure. Um, yeah, to be honest, because uh, I didn't see it live... Just flicking yeah. through these trailers, apart from those two, I don't think there's really anything. Like, well, we've seen some of the villains. like. There's a Resident Evil Two remaster. I've heard that game's quite good, but I don't. Oh, care. we're not talking about Spot. Um, you want to talk briefly about Spider Man? Because I'm very excited to get this game. I was going to say we can do, considering there's nothing else in the PlayStation One. I'm going to talk about. 
Um, so it's got kind of like the Arkham combat, which is a good good sign. Hmm. Um, it's got lots of villains, which I like. I was going to um, say, Spider-Man's got a good rogues gallery, hasn't he? Yeah. This looks a lot like Arkham, but I'm not going to put it. It looks like fun Arkham. Yeah, a bit so more of a light-hearted right. Arkham. Yeah, where he's quipping. He's quipping all the time. You're not worried um, you're going to get bored of the quips. I Spider Man's one of my favourite characters. I'm never going to get bored of quips. Hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, it just look, it look, looks very interesting, very good. Yeah. Excited for that. Uh, Did you see the Let's Play? The uh, Sorry, the um, gameplay. No, I didn't. They did one of those things where they, they take a chunk, like an exciting chunk out of it, and they end it on like a cliffhanger. And basically, uh, okay. you see, you see like the light, a light from something like rise up and shine in Spider Man's face, and he goes, "You, it can't be you," kind of thing. And who do you think it is? Bearing in mind, it's definitely the Green Goblin. <laughs> 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 On a glider. <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of obvious. Yeah. You know, unless it's not, it might not be. Who knows? Could be way, Spider Gwen. Wearing like a head torch. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Um, so yeah, that was Sony. <laughs> yeah. Now this, now we're back to the three that I did see. I think actually Square Enix came first because I remember Square Enix. I described EA's as a wet fart. Uh, <laughs> Square Enix basically did nothing. They showed off a bit more of Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which had already been shown off in <laughs> Xbox's show. They showed a bit more of the Adventures of Captain Spirit, which is another one that had already been shown off. Um, they've the Platinum Games is making a new like uh, action game called Babylon's Fall. That was okay. And then apart from that, it was literally just... Oh, The Quiet Man. Who? Which was just... It's the Quiet Man. It's apparently a game that's come in, uh, but the trailer is just really, really quiet, and then he like beats the shit out of someone. <laughs> and that, and honestly, it was half an hour, and the Octopath Traveler that, continues to look cool, which is like that a sounds RPG. so out of context. I was gonna say, is just a, what is it? Just a man on a bus who's slowly getting annoyed at people listening to music next to him. So it's a man walking along. He's walking along. He's walking in an alleyway. Yeah. He gets confronted by some people. Oh no! It's someone else walking through an alleyway. I don't know. To be honest, I'm just very quickly flicking through the YouTube video because it's so forgettable. <laughs> uh, but either way, it start. It ends with like him fighting with some people in an alleyway, and it's like right. the quiet man. Uh, and that was. It was thirty minutes, and they showed. I think those were the only two reveals was The Quiet Man and <laughs> Babylon's Fall. Babylon's Fall looked alright but it was such a nothing of a show. <laughs> they could have just had their stuff at other people's shows. Most of the games there were at other people's shows. <laughs> but not A Quiet Man. And the thing is the CEO does like the video introduction because it's all pre-recorded. They didn't bother doing a live one which <laughs> clearly not. Because for, yeah. for, for that, there's no point. And he was like, make sure to stay tuned till the very end. So I was like, cool, will it end with like some big reveal? No, they, they, they literally ended with a recap of all the trailers they'd just shown. <laughs> and then they just <laughs> abruptly ended. So no that, wasn't really, that wasn't really like a stay till the end because, you know, exciting news. It's like stay till the end because that's how long the video is. Oh. So that was. Credit scene? No, it, I was literally oh. waiting for it. I, I sat there for at least 30 seconds watching the thank you for coming to our conference screen, <laughs> hoping it was going to like cut to black or something and show something interesting. I it wanted Stan something interesting. Shows Thanos picking up the Infinity Gauntlet. Like, they showed off that Final Fantasy VII remake like two years ago, and there's been nothing since. And, uh, yeah, it was just like, why did you even bother? <laughs> and I mean... <laughs> Like, I wanted it to be good. I'm not saying this out of, like, hatred for, like, Square Enix. They've got interesting properties. But it was just nothing. Anyway, that that means we can move very briefly on to uh, Ubisoft. 
I know them. Oh, there's uh, a new Assassin's Creed, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, which apparently didn't didn't see that Mario has already used the Odyssey name quite recently. <laughs> Um, so Assassin's also, Creed Odyssey just makes me think of like an assassin in like a spaceship throwing his like hood at people. Also, has anyone finished Origins yet? Because I don't think they have. Yes, I, I think haven't. it's long as. I've heard it's just very like padded. Yeah, I just <sighs> it's every t- I like the Assassin's Creed games and I like going to different locations, but like. It hasn't really changed the game much since like three. Three felt like a very fresh, fresh game. Um, and I don't know, maybe it's written well enough that this will be a bit fresher. But it's, oh, my poster just just hit the Is floor. Is it gone? Um, yeah. Oh. Um. I forgot what I was saying. Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Um. It's usually just the same story and. You have to travel to like the other side of the planet to like get to the next mission. It's all uh, it is a bit of a yeah. drag. Yeah. And they so... never move on the um the kind of uh the the modern day storyline much either. I was gonna say I thought that... they'd pretty much given up on that now. It was kind of quite an interesting like plot of the first up until Revelations, like it was quite an quite an interesting plot and then I don't know, it's kind of given up a bit, isn't it? Hmm. So anyway, the Ubisoft uh, conference, as you would expect, uh, started with a big old musical number with a dancing panda. Of course. Uh, because it was Just Dance 2019. Uh, okay. The biggest surprise of that game is that... 2019 appara- is the year the pandas come back, baby. Apparently so. The biggest surprise of that game by far was the fact that apparently it's still getting released for the Nintendo Wii. It must be. Right. It might be the last game series that's still getting Wii ports. Yeah, maybe that was what the panda was for. It was like a metaphor for endangered species. <laughs> what Wii like games? The Wii. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Probably a better me- metaphor for the Wii U. <laughs> um, I'm uh, saying as someone who owned a Wii U. <laughs> uh, so that was an interesting way to start the show. The guy in the panda suit probably got really really warm dancing in that thing <laughs> uh, then stuff like there was a trailer for Beyond Good and Evil 2 which looked kind of alright it looked pretty cool oh yeah Joseph Gordon-Levitt showed up really? yeah uh, so it's cause his um, his company is doing a lot of the audio for the game hit record yeah hit record so he came oh, out cool. and yeah, just basically talked about how he, how much he liked the game and how much he liked doing the sound for the game. Oh, cool! So that was I like that, that was. Guy. He's a he's a great guy. Yeah, he he seems like a nice chap. So that was nice to mm. see. Um, other kind of stuff. Oh yeah, um, probably one of my favorite video game composers, uh, Grant Kirkhope. He did Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, Ukulele, oh, uh, a bunch of the old Donkey Kong games. Uh, because the new he did Marion Marion Rabbids Kingdom Battle the you know that really weird crossover game that came out last year. Oh, I remember. And in celebration of the DK DLC, whilst the trailer was playing, he was there with a live band composing it, playing like the playing the theme live. That's cool. That's really and he cool. looked like he was having the time of his life. It was so much fun. <laughs> and obviously, it was showing off the trailer, and the DLC looks very interesting. You get to play as my main man Dong. Um, and to be honest that's a game I might end up picking up now I've got a Switch just because apparently it's just weirdly good for such a strange concept um, Ubisoft are making their own pirate game after apparently Microsoft obviously made Sea of Thieves and Ubisoft themselves uh, made that <laughs> made Assassin's Creed 4 oh, but it's yes. called Skull and Bones and honestly when the trailer started I was only half paying attention because I was doing like I was just I think I may have even just been staring into space. It was, I wasn't expecting. Like I was just like, oh, it's just an Assassin's Creed game, and then it wasn't. I was like, oh, was that actually a new <laughs> game? Because it just looked like the pirate, you know, the pirate ship battling, yeah. but like made into a whole game. It's called Skull and Bones, so. Well, it could be fun. Might be interesting still, one to keep an eye on. I was gonna say I still favour like that online 
Pirates of the Caribbean games, one of my favourite like PC games I've ever played. Hmm. Did you ever play it? No. It was just called Pirates of the Caribbean Online, but you could like yeah, you could level up and like I think I shit. think pirate adventures are just inherently fun though. Yeah. Um Yeah, there was a new game, like a space exploration game called Starlink. The only real oh, yeah. in, the re- only real thing of note with that is one, it kind of looks like um, No Man's Sky. Uh, two, despite the fact all the other characters in it are humans and humanoid, uh, it's got a crossover with Star Fox from Nintendo. Hey. Uh, so, like, he turns up and is like, ah, wing. And then Miyamoto was there to get, like, a model of the ah, wing as it appears in the game. And he was yeah. like, it was quite a nice moment. Yeah. It seems like Ubisoft and Nintendo are working quite closely at the moment because obviously they did the the Rabbids game and now this. Yeah. Oh, seem to get be getting trusted with quite a few of Nintendo's toys. Um So that that was quite nice. That game looks like it might be quite interesting. And then yeah, it was just more stuff on Odyssey, which apparently you can do a um this is Sparta moment on people. <laughs> Which is like a lot of what the chat when I was watching it was like going on about. Cool. So yeah, that was that was Ubi. Ooh boy. And now boy. finally, at the last one, at like an hour and a half into the podcast. And also the one that might be quite quick, might not, depending on how long we talk about Smash Brothers, is Ninty. Oh oh Nintendo. So Nintendo started the show with like this mech fighting game, action game called like it had some really really stupid name though, so I'm gonna need to look it up. Uh, so I can't even sit. I'm starting to think I might have imagined this game because <laughs> it was called like Damien X Amadeus or something like that. Right. Or Damien X Machina. <laughs> I was like, Damien. That's weird. Like, I'll have to look it up um, at some point. But it looked pretty cool. Um, but to be honest, oh, and obviously a new Mario Party was shown off. But to be mm-hmm. honest, it looks like the most interesting one they've done since for like years and years. So, and Mario Party games are always quite fun to play. So you never know. Might pick that up for like whenever people around. Yeah. Apart from that, there was a bit of uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, a bit of a show off the console Fire Emblem game, a show off a of Fortnite on Switch, as I was saying earlier. Mm-hmm. They also showed off the launch trailer for Hollow Knight on Switch. Hollow Knight, which I almost, I nearly 100%ed when I got it on PC. Wow. Amazing game. So I'm glad it got like a spot with the big guys on the E3 show floor. Oh, cool. Uh, Hollow Knight is, yeah, just, I'd definitely recommend. I think yeah. it might have even won one of our awards last year. Um, but to be honest, the main thing is, did you see any of the Smash Bros coverage? I didn't, know. Uh, oh yeah, there's some stuff about, there's a little bit of stuff about Pokemon, but we might still do that as our topic next week. Yeah, let's do it as a topic next week. Because this one is getting on. But the, um... Smash Bros uh, started with uh, Masahiro Sakurai, who's been the director all the way through, um, like introducing like the segment, and it for like it was only like a fifty minute show, and Smash Bros must have taken up about thirty minutes of it. Like it was purely a Smash Bros. Yeah, if you like, so in that respect, it was a bit disappointing because I was expecting at least one really really interesting other reveal. But it was quite interesting to see what they are planning for Smash Bros. Basically... Because we all knew there was a new Smash Bros game coming anyway, didn't we? Yeah, because they announced it at Nintendo Direct. Yeah. Granted, all they announced at the Nintendo Direct was obviously that the Inklings, the uh, you're a squid now, you're a kid now from Splatoon, were joining. <laughs> but the... Well, this one's being called Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And its big thing is that it will feature every single character that's ever been in Smash. So no one's getting cut. Like, huh. fucking Piku is back from Melee. <laughs> no one cares about Piku, but he's now in the game as well. Um, so I thought that was quite interesting. So that puts 
their roster up to like over 65 already right um and I could do a far more detailed video on the Smash Bros reveal and in fact I might do if my friend if, uh, if my more Smash savvy friends want to but um <laughs> I thought interesting so the there was only one new character revealed so I'm not sure if another one will get revealed during E3 as they have done before but Ridley um who is basically the uh, Samus's uh, villain from the Metroid games, basically big old dragon, yeah. um, has been announced as playable, and he's been like one of the longest requested characters. And his reveal trailer, which they kind of ended off with, was really <laughs> quite dark when you think about it, because it's basically it's. I'd suggest anyone watch it. Suggest you go and watch it next. I think you quite enjoy it. It's mm-hmm. um, Samus, Mario, and Mega Man like walking through this like facility, and they're walking across like you know like the thin bridge across a like abyss, mm-hmm. and then uh, a shadow swoops down and gets Mega Man, and then you see this tail pierce through his chest, and he Jesus. just dies, and then. They keep walking, and then it comes down again and takes up Mario, leaving his hat behind. And then again, you see the tail impale Mario. Jesus. And then Samus is, like, super on edge and, like, turns around and, like, Ridley's, like, coming down, like, rah! And, like, the two go off into the fight, like... And to be honest, it looks like they got a pretty cool, like, control scheme. Definitely the largest Smash Bros. character, because the criticism always was that Ridley was too big to be a Smash Bros. fighter. <laughs> Yeah, and to be honest, it looks like it'll be one of the biggest characters, but it looks like it'll be quite fun. Apart from that, the game very much looks like it's built off the Wii U version's engine. Um, one of the, like they've announced a bunch of like little changes here and there that I could talk about all day, but the interesting one is because da- they had Dark Pit and Lucina in Smash Four for the what well, Wii U and 3DS hmm. that were basically clone characters, and this time they've kind of they've given them the fancy name of Echo Fighters basically get characters that play a tiny bit different but essentially the same Right. and yeah. they announced another one in that you'll have Daisy as like an alternate for Peach but the thing I find is I don't know where the line is beto- between a distinct character in quote marks and an Echo Fighter because mm. I'm pretty sure they put Dr. Mario as his own character when he is very much just Mario with a slightly <laughs> different play style. So I'm not sure why yeah. he, he's not an Echo Fighter. And I'm pretty sure back in the day Piku was a clone of Pikachu. But I think he's also got his own distinct slot. So I'm kind of not sure where the distinction is. Yeah. Although granted it's kind of cool that like every character is coming back. Like no one's cut. Even Snake is coming back. And there's always, always there's always been a bit of a raised eyebrow as to whether they, uh, you know, um, Konami would let them use Snake, and obviously, what with uh, Hideo Kojima having left and everything like that. Right. Yeah. Huh. So That's it's cool. going to be an interesting one, but I was hoping for like a honestly a more in, like a, either another reveal or just a really out of left field reveal for a new character. Yeah. So. Like yeah. the alien. Well, to be honest, there's still plenty they can do because I get very much the impression from this this will be Sakurai's last game. Mm. I think this will be his last entry in the Smash Bros. series. Granted, he's been saying that since Melee, the second one. And this is now the sixth one. <laughs> uh, the kind of like Smash Bros. Like Michael Bro- Bay with the Transformers films. He just can't yeah. step away. But the fact that this has been called Ultimate and they're bringing in Ridley, who's been requested at the very beginning and everyone's getting a place at the table. Mm. It does seem like it's going that way which if so I hope this is a game that obviously is a good final one because he's he's been basically Smash would not be Smash without him in the director's chair yeah anyway Hmm. I was going to say unless there's been anything today I think but either way that can wait until next week because we'll be back on our regular Monday slot he says yeah knock on wood (laughs) optimistic yeah so (laughs) I think that brings us to the... Uh, is there anything else you'd like to... Any other business before we close today's meeting of the Cynical Optimists? No. Anything to plug? 
Not this week. So, if you'd like to follow us on Twitter, we are at Synopt Podcast, where we tweet various things at various times. Um... Yeah, we'll be back next week on Monday talking about, I guess, Pokemon, because we didn't retouch on it today. Talking about the Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, and then what we'd want from a main series Pokemon game as well, because supposedly this one isn't... This one's a, more of a spin-off, and I don't really know why. Mm-hmm. But we'll be kind of deep diving into that next week. Um, obviously, give this video a like if you like to let us know in the comments. And yes, thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you next week. I have been Phil. And I've been Nick. Thanks for what thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.